Hello and welcome to Hibs TV. It's been a very busy week here at the club with the January transfer window slamming shut on Thursday evening. Seven new faces are through the door and now the focus is fully on the second half of the season. There's a good opportunity today to kick off a good run of form as we take on St Mirren here at Easter Road, 3pm kickoff. And to talk us through the January transfer window and today's game, I'm delighted to say I'm joined by Hibs Director of Football, Brian McDermott. Brian, it's very windy, but how are you? Freezing. <laughs> it's not actually, used to the weather yet? Well, I no, when you get older, you get a little bit colder. So uh, it is jolly cold up here. It really is. It's cold, but it's fine. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, it, it's been not only a busy week, a busy couple of months, probably, for you. The January transfer window is obviously now closed. H how has that gone? What's your assessment of the window? I think we've come out really, really well. Um, that's, and that's the, the, uh, the outcome of all the work that's been done by all the guys in the recruitment um, part of the building, you know, uh, Calvin and Archie and Eddie, all the guys that do a lot of great work and, and the manager and Ian Gordon. And, um, the thing for me is the manager knows what he wants and it's very, very clear. He knows how he wants to play and he knows the kind of player that, um, that he wants to bring in. Um, and there's no gray area. So it makes scouting for the players that we want to do, um, really easy. Yeah, I was going to say when when um, Nick came through the door, I'm, I'm sure one of the first conversations with with you was like, "This is the type of player I want for for each position." When you have that framework, how does that then help you going into a window? Well, I suppose I'd seen his, his team play for Central Coast Mariners, so we knew I knew his team off off by heart and backwards, and I knew how he wanted to play, and the and the system of play and and the way he wanted to do things. So it's. Um, it's really it's a, it's so much easier for a scouting department once the manager's very very clear and he's very very clear and um, he doesn't deviate from what he wants and what he knows uh, aside from results so like if you take the results aside it's where we want to get to you know and the way we want to play and the way that we want to be and that's that's really very very clear and we knew last three or four weeks were going to be difficult and they've proved to be difficult um, but that's okay. That doesn't change where we're trying to go and what we're trying to do here. Yeah, and albeit being quite difficult, we've managed to bring in seven mm. good players that, that adds to the, the quality that we already had in the squad. Yeah. And from a budget perspective as well, we, we've stuck within that budget. Yeah, and you know, we're, we're close on the budget, which is really important. And, and for me, you know, you know, Ben, Ben Kensel does a great job running things at our football club and and the budget is important to all of us and and the manager is very very much aware of that you know he wants to spend money in the right way and he he, he wants to look after our club and i want to look after our club and that's that's important i, I was a club i was at reading for 13 years where we did that and maintained the budget and and they've had and they've gone off what we used to do back in the day and and that's becoming really, really difficult for that club. So I, I understand budgets and I understand how it works and, and we want to maintain what we're trying to do within our budget. Yeah, and obviously during the window, um, three players have, have come in from, from Bournemouth. Um, mm. You've obviously spent a lot of time scouting the likes of, of Owen Bevan, Emiliano Marcondes and Nathan Mariah Welsh. How exciting is that that partnership in terms of being able to, to take players from them? It's so exciting and, and what I like as well is we know the guys at Bournemouth, you know, um, we know them on a football perspective and we're getting to know them um, on a personal level and we have um, real good collaboration collaboration and connect and connection with them and, and Ben knows the CEO really really well so that's a good partnership and we know their players like uh, Emmy Marcondes we we've known for a long time mm. um, Owen Bevan um, we scouted and we believe a, a really really good player um, and Nathan as well I went to see him play and we've seen him play previously and he's got bundles of energy so it's, it's a really good partnership now and it's a good partnership moving forward and and what obviously from a football perspective i'm talking from that it, i think it's a really good uh, combination yeah just before we we look at today's game i just wanted finally just to touch upon the the squad depth and the quality that that we have in the squad obviously players coming back from injury the likes of adam lafondra chris cadden 
Um, unfortunately, Australia were knocked out of the, the Asian Cup yesterday, but that is a positive, I suppose, in some ways for us with Martin Boyle and, and Lewis Miller coming back. And obviously Rocky will be hopefully back in the, the next couple of weeks soon. When all the, the squad is, is fit and available to play, Nick has some, some real selection headaches, doesn't he, ahead of him, which is good. Which is what he wants. And, and he said it, the manager said it to the, um, to the players, you know, um, having competition is healthy. And it's really, really important. And, you know, for me, you know, you look around and you see what's on the bench, you see really, really good players that are actually not involved and not playing. And they're able to come on and they're game changers. For, you know, Adam LaFondra coming back, Chris Cadden coming back, Boyler's coming back, Lewis is coming back, Rocky will be back soon. So this is a great place for the club to be, you know. And all the support that we've had from, from the Gordon family, from Ian and from Kit and and from the board and from Ben, everybody wants this club to be successful, and uh, and that's what it's for. You know, we're trying to do everything we can um, to make sure that we're successful moving forward. Um, and it and it's, it's it's another game today, and this is this is where we're trying to, to trying to get to and and try and get a really good performance and uh, the right result today. Absolutely. And last weekend we saw one of those game changes that, that Brian spoke about just then in terms of Maizan Maya leader. He came off the bench against Kilmarnock and helped us come back from 2-0 down to draw 2 all at Rugby Park. Let's just have a quick look back at that one. Lovely flick by Emiliano Dylan Benti. Goes for the shot early, just wide. Oh, okay. well, it's a good delivery and it's in the back of the head's net. Benti will get there. Has he got any support? Cuts it back. Who's there? Emiliano's there. It's a good stop. Yeah. Uh, it's a poor ball in from Hibbs defensively. Mizian does well over on the edge, chance here for Jair, can he get the shot away, it's a good save by the Kelly keeper, but... Oh, what oh. a finish, that is Great from finish. Joe Rule. wow! That came out of absolutely nothing, it was a whip ball in from Rory Whittaker. Red. That is a red card for Ndaba. Ball. ball over the top, Mizian's done well, holds that nicely, can he turn and get the shot away, Mizian, oh. what a finish! Brian, we were just looking back at that game just then. Before we, we go into go into the, the real detail within that game, I just wanted to touch upon Emilio Marcondes and Maizan Melida. Emilio, I know, obviously started that game, showed real moments of quality, leadership on the pitch in, in that role. And then obviously Mazzani's, Mazzani's finish was outstanding. Yeah, and um, yeah, I mean, I... <sighs> Emmy's such a really good guy. He's a really good, and, and so is Mazzani as well. He's a top, top guy. Um, I watched him a lot when he was at Leon and when he was playing in the B team when he was a kid when I was scouting for Arsenal. And um, for me, it's about getting his potential out. Um, and if I, if our manager, which he can, which he's notoriously good at doing, is finding the potential in in, in these players like that, God, it's going to be some player. Uh, and and, and Emmy's a he's a super guy and he's a really talented boy and, and the manager was really really keen to get him. He's different, you know. He's got that um, that X factor. Uh, so we're like we're saying, we were absolutely delighted to get both of these guys. Yeah, absolutely. And in terms of of that game, obviously there there was moments of of control. First twenty five minutes in particular, the the confidence seemed to dip a little bit after after the first goal. But the players showed great character, didn't they? To to respond from that and equally the manager made three changes off the bench which seemed to change the momentum of the game yeah i, I wasn't at the game i was at another game in in england um so obviously i was following it on twitter and not twitter whatever i don't do twitter but i was just <laughs> following it um 
So I was, I was delighted. I was delighted that we got a result and we finished strong. And Doji had a chance at the end that we might have nicked the game. But I think it was um, from a from a position of like the emotional side of it to get that draw when we were two 0 down just shows that you know we we can come back. And now we've got players that have gelled for another week and. And we're just trying to make sure that everyone's in it together and the players are gelling and the, and the manager can keep doing his stuff. Um, uh, and really looking forward to the, uh, to the last how many ever games that we've got to play in the, in the season. Absolutely. Well, we'll just take a quick look at the league table now then. Obviously, Hibs are just three points behind today's opponents, St Mirren. What, as, a, as, a, as a manager, as a director of football, when do you start looking at, at the league table? When it finishes. <laughs> <laughs> don't look at Simple it. Simple as that. No, the only go the only show in town is St Mirren. You yeah. know, you start talking about what could happen, what would happen, and what has happened. It's not really relevant. The only thing that's relevant is today, and is to try and get the best performance we can today. Um, get the, the the manager gets the the boys playing in the best way we can. The fans go home happy, and then the outcome's going to be the outcome. And obviously, we want to win this game. Everybody really wants to win the game, but we can't go in with we have to win this game. It has to be this that pressure that, That's not a good thing to be putting on the players. We go out we perform all I know is they're prepared All I know is they're ready. All I know is there's not been a stone left unturned. That's what I do know Yeah, absolutely and we'll look at the other teams that are in action as well today there is the early kickoff, which is Aberdeen taking on Celtic, and then three o'clock kickoffs with Dundee taking on Hearts, Motherwell taking on Kilmarnock, Rangers at home to Livingston, and Ross County at home to St Johnston. Hibs fans will obviously be, be coming into this one and, and wanting and hoping that this game, Brian, kicks us on now for the second half of the season. Yeah, and we just want the fans to go home happy. That, that's that's the thing. That's why we're here. That's why we. That's why you're in football because you you know you. You play for your fans. You know, I, I still got that vision at Hamden when we played so well at, against Aberdeen when our fans were in, incredible. And, um, you know, unfortunately we'd lost that game. And, and for me, that sort of, and I know it would be for the manager and the players is to sort of, it galvanises you when you see that support that we've got and the support that we travel with. So um, that's why we're here. We want them to have a really good day. We all want to have a good day. And, and obviously we want the right outcome. Yeah, absolutely. We'll go to a quick break now, but make sure you do stay with us because we'll be, we'll be speaking a little bit more to Brian and hearing from our head coach, Nick Montgomery, as well. We'll see you shortly. Complexity Travel is made up of some of London's leading bespoke travel managers. Simplexity specialise in luxury travel services for corporate and private clients, groups and individuals who lead busy lives. Simplexity will simplify challenging schedules and complex trip itineraries, ensuring our clients always travel with complete peace of mind and a perfect luxury. Simplexity Travel, making luxury travel simple.
through Hibs TV and Easter Road as we continue to build up to today's game against St Mirren. Me and Brian are just about here, not been blown away by the wind just yet. We're just going to take a quick look back now at our game against St Mirren earlier this year, the one away where we drew two all. These games have been full of goals and have shown that you can't leave your seat until the end. There's, there's times where it's, you know, like that. that it's oh, Gogic perfect. has missed it. Dylan Vent is inside the penalty area, cuts it back. Josh Campbell gets the shot away oh. and Hibs take the lead. Well, that was out of absolutely nothing. Hibs spring forward quickly. It was a mistake by former high B Alex Gogic that allowed the ball to run through to Dylan Vente, he slipped into the path of Josh Campbell and from the edge of the box the returning midfielder drills the ball beyond Zach Hemming in the St Mirren goal and Hibs have the lead after 12 minutes, St Mirren nil, Hibs won it's a, it's, it's a mistake obviously Cliff but we, we pick up on it really really well Strain will take right through to Vincent Inc. Hibs standing tall and win the goal kick you can see the, sh the, the tug in his shirt, but he's not. He's never getting to the ball. Do you know what's happening? Well, it's 52 minutes, 53 minutes on the clock. O'Hara steps up. Right footed, Marshall goes the wrong way. Submitting back on level terms. Certainly, Martin Boyle, you would expect, might get a, a run out. Ellie Yuan's done well over on the far side into the path of Dylan Venti. It's the byline, cuts it back, oh, here's the chance, yes. it's in the net, Hibs have the lead, Joe Newell it is. Well, Ellie Yuan it was, that burst forward with pace, into the path of Dylan Venti. He gets to the byline, looks up, cuts it across the six yard box. And Joe Newell it is, the skipper there to roll the ball into the net. 68 minutes on the clock, Hibs lead by two goals to one. Really, really good play, you know, especially... Right at the start from Ellie Yuan. Good ball into Dylan Venti. You know, Dylan Venti's run's really good. Sitting there and win it back. Slip by Jago. Marcus into the path of Greed, blocked again by Rocky. And it falls at the edge of the Hibs area, and it looks as though it's Lewis Jameson. Brian, we're just looking back at that game. It, in truth, it was a really good performance from Nick's side. Two really unfortunate goals, albeit with the, the penalty. And then the second one, so fortunate for the deflection to fall back to 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 their goal scorer um, to equalise. Yeah, I thought it was really unfortunate. I thought the penalty was harsh at best. Uh, I thought it, uh, and right at the death, ball dropped to the guy and he finished it well. So, But that was then, and I thought we played well on the night. Uh, it was a good game, and we all, we seem to have good games against St Mirren. Stephen Robinson's done a really good job for St, St Mirren, and he is doing a really good job. So, um, yeah, we know we're in for a really difficult game today. It's going to be a tough game, and hopefully we can all enjoy it. Yeah, you're right in what you're saying. They always seem to be good games at, against St Mirren, and the last one here at Easter Road was one that will live long in the memory, I'm sure, of, of Hibs fans as we ran out 4-2 winners. Kilty does well, decent ball in, man's on climbs, chance here for Tanza, that's a fantastic goal from St Mirren. Mandron knocked the ball down, it was cleared to the edge of the area and Tanza with the left foot, first time, flashes it beyond David Marshall into the far corner. Good delivery, it's in the net, Hips have the equaliser! It was Will Fish that nodded the ball goalwards. I'm not sure if it took a deflection off someone on the way in. But Hibs are back on level terms. Six minutes gone in this second half. And just the start to the second half that Nick Montgomery would have wanted, Joel. And he gets the ball out to Lewis Miller on the far side. He looked to take on Tanzer. Cuts inside him. Goes back outside, there's Lewis Miller, lovely ball, Dylan Venti turns, and it's in the back of the net, as you'd expect. Give the ball to the high bees number nine, anywhere around that penalty spot, and boom! It's lead 2-1. Dylan Venti, 
What a goal! I thought the opportunity had been missed there, Cliff, when he took, uh, when he hesitated, but he knew what he was doing. He shifted the ball well, and it found itself in the back of the net. Hard to win it back. O'Hara threads it through for Bacchus. There's a gap there for the St Mirren man. He drives it beyond David Marshall into the far corner. His defenders stood off the Australian as he drove towards the 18-yard box. Once again, not closing down the space. Forward for Corey Whitaker. He's done well, the youngster. He opened the play out. He does. Miller in the box, but doesn't get the ball there. It's going to fall here. It's in the net. What a finish from Martin Boyle. It broke kindly for him inside the area from Josh Campbell's ball in. Martin Boyle turns and flashes the ball into the net, off the crossbar, underside of the bar, into the net, beats the St Mirren goalkeeper, all ends up, and just about 80 minutes on the clock, hips back in the lead, hips three, St Mirren two. By Jago, who does well in the air for not the tallest man on the pitch, no chance here for Hibbs, it's rolled forward again into the path of Boyle, drives into the area, can he finish it this time? Yes he can! Get in there! Martin Boyle finishes it, hits four, St Mirren two. It'll be another visit to Easter Road West for the High Bees. St Mirren having to push forward to well to try and get the equaliser and get the game to extra time, got picked off, and this time Martin Boyle buries it. Brian, we were just looking back at that 4-2 win against St Mirren here. A really, really exciting game probably for, for the neutral and probably for yourself as well. Rory Whitaker obviously came on and, and made a, a big impact as well, obviously helping us find the third goal. Yeah, um, yeah, and it was a good result. And uh, yeah, Obviously, we're delighted with the performance on the night and, uh, and everyone enjoyed it. Everyone went home and from our side happy and uh, yeah, that was a long time ago. Yeah, absolutely. The, yeah. And the, the games against St Mirren have have been, um, they have been attacking. They've been good, free flowing, um, lots lots of goals. Do you, do you think the same thing probably will happen today? Just because of the style of the two teams? I have no idea. Um, <laughs> I don't know. And that's it. You know, every every single game of football is different. And you know, you kick off and you sort of work out what it's going to be like after 20 minutes, and the game might open up after 20 minutes, after 60 or 70 minutes. But you know, no one can predict what's going to happen. You know, we know how they play, they know how we play, they'll be planning, we'll be planning, and that's the great thing about football, you know, and uh, you know, how it looks. And for me, it's just, you know, let's see, watch the game, see how it pans out. Managers will make the changes when the times are right. So that's why it's fascinating to be involved in football and watch it pan out. And I like that side of it. I like seeing how the managers can, you know, do their stuff and and how they plan. And and I like watching that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, after a short break, we'll hear from our head coach, Nick Montgomery. When it comes to things that are exclusive to Scotland, we all have a thing or two to say. They're amazing. They blew me away. Superb. Excellent customer service from start to finish. First class service every time. 10 out of 10. A fantastic sales exec. Nothing was too much trouble. Outstanding. I wouldn't go anywhere else now. Just some of the things that have been said about us. Macklin Motors, exclusive to Scotland.
work done. Enough of that. I am totally winning! Oh, and relax in. Here's your water. With a coffee. Thank you. I love this film. I'm doing all of this on my way to Mum's. Because it's all possible on an LNER train. Next stop, London. And I'm almost there. Hello and welcome back to Hibs TV. Earlier on in the show, we heard from our director of football, Brian McDermott, who gave his assessment of the window. Well, before today's game, we also caught up with our head coach, Nick Montgomery, who gave his thoughts on how productive the transfer window has been. Nick, firstly, obviously, it was a really busy day yesterday. Um, we've done some good business during the, the January transfer window. How would you assess it? It's been a real busy, busy period. I thought you know, the transfer window started out quite quiet, but you know, I worked really hard with the recruitment department and the staff to, to, you know, to look at the targets that we'd like to bring in. Um, you know, that was something that we had to be patient with. Um, and then, yeah, it sort of all, all came you know, in the last sort of week or two of the window. But I think I'm really happy with the, the quality of players that we've brought in. I think we brought players from big clubs and, and every player comes with his own circumstances. Um, some, um, you know, because they need to get game time and, and, and want to come and play for Hibs. And, and a couple on permanence as well, which we know is, uh, you know, a long term project coming in now and, and giving us the ability to, to, to keep them this season and, and going into next season as well. So I think it's been a really uh, important window for us to, to sort of rebuild the squad a little bit. and and really create competition for places um, and every player that's left the club has left on good terms for his own reasons as well and, and I'm really happy with where we're at and I'm looking forward to, to getting the boys back from international duty and one or two injuries and I think the squad's as healthy as it's been all season. Yeah, a lot of new faces coming into the squad. How, how will they settle because obviously there's, there's games coming thick and fast at the moment. Ah, they've already settled in um, well. Obviously, you know it's going to take a couple of weeks for them to fully get into, you know, the the uh, the way that we train and the way that we play. But we've spent a, a bit more time doing video and stuff, and I think everybody's um, you know really bought in already to to, to the club and, and the fans and how passionate the fans are and the expectation as well. So you know, speaking to every player. Uh, before they came to the club, I made it very clear of you know why we wanted to bring them to the club, and I can only say it's been a real pleasant experience. And yeah, training's been been very good, and I think the biggest thing is the the, the depth and the competition for places, which is really important. Yeah, and you'll have some big decisions to make, obviously, tomorrow in, in terms of team selection against St Mirren. Aside, obviously, you know very well from the games we've played them already this season. Yeah, well, they're the headaches that you want as a manager. You want to be able to, to pick a team and you also want to be able to make changes off the bench and players that can impact off the bench, you know, as well as look at, you know, uh, games where we have uh, three games a week. And it gives us the ability to rotate players because um, I think, yeah, to, to be really competitive, it's important that, um, yeah, that, that, that there is real competition for places. And I think that's one thing that myself and the club have worked really hard to, to bring in the right type of players to really create, uh, to create that competition. What do you expect from, from St Mirren on Saturday? Big game, isn't it? Yeah, they're all big games. Every game's a big game. You know, we, as you mentioned, we've played them a couple of times before. You know, they're well organised. Um, we expect them to come with a game plan, but it's about us. You know, and, and it's about us approaching the game at home at Easter Road you know, in front of our fans and, and putting on a good performance. And, and hopefully uh, yeah, we'll have a good crowd tomorrow. And, you know, people will be uh, looking forward to, to seeing the, the new additions to the squad. Um, but yeah, every game is important and you know, we'll approach it the same way. Just finally, how are we looking in terms of team news? In terms of team news, um, Adam Fonja came back midweek, played 45 minutes. Chris Cadden played 45 minutes, so you know he's still got a while to go in terms of his uh, in being fully ready to to, to play games. Um, but now it's really nice to to get two boys back available for selection. Um, and, and yeah, I think obviously um, you know, the new boys coming in are all available for selection as well, which is really important. So yeah, I'm looking forward to to uh, to, to the game tomorrow. 
Yeah, and Paul Hanlon's uh, a doubt for the weekend. Right? Yeah, he's a doubt. He's been uh, struggling with a bit of an illness the last couple of weeks. Missed the Rangers game, and you know Paul's a soldier. He played against Kilmarnock on the weekend, and yeah, then unfortunately didn't didn't feel great. So yeah, it's important that that he recovers and, and gets himself well because yeah, we got a big end to this season and we got players coming back. So you know, for me, it's great to have um, selection headaches, and I know that on the bench we've got real impact of the players that that, that come off the bench, and that's really important for the squad. Absolutely. Good luck this weekend. Cheers. Thank you. Brian, we heard from the gaffer just then. He was speaking so positively around the work that's been done in the window. I suppose now when you have seven players new in the building, it's about getting them up to speed in terms of training and match fitness so then they can hit the ground running for the rest of this or the next six months. Yeah, and that's what you hope. You hope that you know everyone comes together, their team gels as quickly as possible. You know, we've been training really, really hard. I know that the manager and the surge and the staff have been going through a lot of video stuff with them and talking about how we play. You know, but you know, we've brought Nectar Trianthus in and he knows the gaffer really, really well because he played for him in, um, in Central Coast. And by the way, that was a long time to get that deal over the line. So <laughs> we're absolutely delighted that that one came through as well. So, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see. And, 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 you know, it all starts at three. Yeah, just finally, how much you, are you looking forward to this game? Uh, yeah, I, I um, that's a good, do I look forward? Yeah, I do. I, 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 think you I do. just, I, well, I want I want us to do well. That's yeah. that's what I want. I want the manager to do well, the staff to do well. I want the the boys to play well, and 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 I want the people, the, the, our fans, to go home happy. So um, that's it for me. You know, that's it in a nutshell. I just want the boys to do well and and play to the levels that we know they can play at, and uh, that's the key. So it's not so much looking forward to it. I just want people to do well and I want our guys to do well and I want it to, to be a good day for our fans. Yeah, absolutely. And hopefully it will be. Brian, thank you very much for joining us. And thank you to everyone for watching at home. Like Brian says, hopefully everyone will go ha home happy this afternoon.